surrounded in the world by rampant immorality. 130,000 babies were aborted today. Sex trafficking, a $58 billion industry worldwide. Some cultures abusing distinctions between male and female, other cultures ignoring distinctions between male and female. Over a billion people live and die in desperate poverty. Though I would like to insulate myself from these statistics, they represent realities. James says, if there's no mercy in your life toward the orphan and the widow, if you're living according to the ways of this world, and if you don't have a tight rein on your tongue, your religion is a sham. It's worthless. We must speak clearly and biblically and boldly on these things. A global, God-exalting, passionate idealism is exactly what is needed in the Church of Christ today. You can't know this King and be silent about this King. We're compelled to live out our faith in Him, to apply our convictions from Him in every facet of our lives. It may cost us at work. It may cost us in our community. It may cost us according to the government. But we obey Christ regardless of what it costs because we fear God more than we fear men. Let's live differently than the world around us. Let's turn things upside down because we want His gospel to spread to the nation. We want His glory more than we want life itself. Hey brothers and sisters, it's Jared. I hope that this video inspired you as it has inspired me, has encouraged you and exhorted you as it has encouraged and exhorted me. I am back right now for my trip to New York City, fully refreshed in the Lord. It was a great time. We were able to minister to the people of the city, as well as meet up with one of the subscribers from my channel, which was just great. Um, I want to encourage you guys right now. I know that there is so much stuff going on in our world. We can see the Antichrist spirit moving all around us. But what should we do in response to this? Well, let us live out the word of God in this dying world. As people move more and more to the Antichrist system, more and more to the spirit and the worship of this world, let us be not conformed to the image of this world, but renewed in our minds by the word of God. Let us, as James said, live out this faith. Let us go out into the streets, into our workplaces, into our homes with maybe our lost and unsaved family members and exemplify the work of Christ that has happened in us. Let us be those who are filled with the love of Christ, ministering to those who are lost and broken, those who are hurting, those who have been deceived by the God of this age. There are people who have depression. There are people who have drug addiction, who have physical infirmities, and we have been given the answer. We have been given the truth. We have been given the power of a holy God, and we have been set here in this world to be lights in the darkness. So, I'll say to you guys, as I go into these projects that I'm working on right now, first of all, please keep me in prayer that I would have wisdom and discernment from the Holy Spirit, that I would not be led to stray by any deceiving spirit, but that I would be founded in the truth. Secondly, let us all not be deceived. Let us be founded in God's word. Let us have our sword, lest we will not be able to fight anything at all. We will be soldiers without a weapon. We will be those who are running this race without any food or sustenance in our bodies. If you are not in the word of God, I pray that you would be in his word daily, daily, yes. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, go to the Word. You're about to go and face demons and demonic forces all around you. Read at least a chapter of truth that will combat every single lie that you face in that day. So, brothers and sisters, be in this Word. Be in prayer. I mean, the psalmist said, Thy words have I written on my heart that I might not sin against thee. And then we see all through the psalms. What is he doing? He's speaking 
to the Lord. He's in prayer to a holy God that is carrying him through his sorrows, his low points, through his high points. He is in thanks. I mean, let us be in prayer. We have been given the opportunity to come before his throne of grace boldly and with confidence. No longer is there a veil between us separating us where we have to go through the ritual and the ceremony, but we can come before God with confidence. Do you understand what a privilege this is? Do you understand what price was paid for that? Jesus' own blood on the cross gave us that access. And I will tell you, so many Christians just play with it lightly and say, oh, but prayer, I mean, it's boring. Let me tell you what, that is a spiritual attack against you. Recognize that as an attack of the enemy. This is your access to the throne of God. There is not one single thing boring about that. And if you see the need for prayer in this country, not one single thing will happen. I don't care if you've been a street preacher for 20 years. If you're not in prayer, you're not not doing it right straight up that is the bottom line we must be in prayer we must be seeking this holy God that he will give us wisdom that he will give us discernment that he will give us direction Paul was not walking around aimlessly all over the world trying to figure out where he should go just guessing and testing it he was led by a holy God he knew that at the end of his life he was going to stand before Caesar and present the gospel I'm going to tell you I want to have that type of direction in my life I'm not going to just walk around feeling around trying to see where I'm supposed to go maybe I should go here maybe I should go there I have been confirmed many times in the spirit what church I should be at where I should go who I should be in fellowship with what direction I should take next in this ministry that God has raised up and I will tell you what it has taken a burden off my shoulders because I myself I don't know where to go and I'm just gonna stumble around aimlessly but thank God that he gives us direction and shows us what we should do let us be voices of truth let us be representatives of the love of, that God has shown us. Let us be here in this world completely opposite of everything that this culture does. So please keep me in prayer, brothers and sisters. And any of you who have been studying this stuff for a long time, you see the way the world is going. You see what is happening. You see the Antichrist spirit. What are you going to do now? Don't be deceived. You do not need your doctorate in demonics. You do not need to know every single thing that is going on. Be aware, the understanding of it, but what are you going to do if you have the knowledge of what is happening in this world and the deception? Understand the parable of the talents. You have been given talents. You have been given wisdom. Don't bury it inside yourself. I promise you that because what happened to that servant is he was cast out, but come back with tenfold, a hundredfold, come back speaking the truth to people, freeing those who are in bondage to this system. Show them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That parable speaks to us in so many more ways than one. All of God's word does. Each time we read it, we have a greater understanding, a greater depth of knowledge of what God is speaking to us. Don't be deceived as the person who's like, I've already read God's word. Listen, once you finish up, you better start back over again and read it for the rest of your life because you can never know all of what is inside of that book in your own human understanding. And even when we are in glory, we will have a greater understanding of what God was truly speaking to us and we miss all the time that we were on this earth in our futility. So I pray that we would have this burden upon our hearts for the lost. We would have this burden for God's word. God bless you all, and be well in the Lord. Father, I thank you, God, with all my heart. This is not an hour to be entertained in the house of God. We need to hear from you. God Almighty, I ask you in Jesus' name to take this frail vessel. Anoint me. And let the words that you will speak come alive in our hearts. Jesus, Son of God, give us vision for the day in which we're living in. Give us faith. Give us power. Give us help. Give us hope. Father, I yield my body to you. And I ask you, Lord, in mercy and humility to speak through me. I ask you, Father, to give us ears to hear what you would be speaking to your people at this hour in which we're living. Oh, God, help us. Give us strength, faith, and vision for the days in which we find ourselves. Lord, we know in our hearts that you're coming soon. 
Oh God, give us oil in our lamps. Help us to stand and burn brightly for the truth that we in our hearts know is right. Help us, Lord, to get out of all compromise, to get away from everything that is dulling the testimony of your life within ours. Help us to make the break, O oh God, to be fully embracers of your kingdom, of your truth, of your way. Jesus, help us. God, we need your help. We can't do it without you, Lord. We can't do it without the power of your Holy Spirit. We can't do it, Lord, without your word alive in us. And we can't even understand your word unless you let us understand it. And so God of all mercy, the one who sent his son to a cross, visit us and awaken us and strengthen us for the day in which we live. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.